What's up guys and welcome back to Tech Plant. Today I'm going to show you my carnivorous plant collection that I've had for over a year. I've propagated and I've got all kinds of different cool stuff so let's check it out. One by one I'm going to show you each of the three bins of carnivorous plants. We'll start with the big sundew one. This is pretty much all sundews actually. This bin is just chuck full of these sundews. A lot of them came from leaf propagating and divisions and also there's a ton of them that are flowering right now and they just create tons of seeds. If you keep a good feeding schedule you'll get tons of seeds from these guys and tons of divisions. My Drosera capensis is in the middle of flowering and they're actually quite pretty. Enough of just this general footage of all of them. Let's start pulling them out one by one and I'm going to show you each species that I have because there's tons of unique ones just in the sundew family. This first one is one of my favorites. I actually have two total favorites but this one is the the second favorite. This one is the King Sundew or Drosera Regia and this one it gets the biggest of all of mine. Right now it's pretty young but eventually it's gonna be pretty massive probably one foot tall but they have nice strong broad leaves. This one was my first favorite one and this one is Drosera Gromogolensis. Sorry if I mess up any of these names a lot of them are hard for me but anyways I love this one it has huge leaves tons of dew and it just gets big and prolific. This one easily propagates from just leaf cutting so you can really multiply them and they go for a pretty penny on eBay but I do just love the red coloring and just the big leaves. This next one kind of looks like the king sundew but it's much skinnier. This one is Drosera filiformis. I like this one too because it's very easy to divide and propagate. Any cutting will give you a bunch of little plants and it grows pretty quick. This one is especially good at catching fungus gnats so I really love to have a bunch of these because they really keep the population in check. These have a cool characteristic where they kind of unroll as they grow out so it looks really cool to watch the new leaves kind of sprout. These pretty little rosette ones are Drosera natalensis. I like these just because if you put multiples in a pot, they can really kind of cover the dirt and just have this nice, beautiful red dewy color. I really like them and they look very beautiful because they're such a dense rosette. The only thing I don't like about this species is it never stops flowering. So you really have to make sure you keep feeding it because a lot of these sundews can kind of flower themselves to death. Here's another interesting one. This one is Drosera petiolaris. And these are actually from the same plant, even though they look quite different. Once I divided them, they kind of took on a different look, which was very curious. I like these because when they're not flowering, they put up a bunch of the same length petals with the small little round like dewy parts and it makes like a nice little bushy dewy appearance that I really like. And again, these ones divide very nicely so you can keep getting more. I hope in the footage you can tell that one of them is kind of lightly colored and hairy and the other one is missing a lot of the hairs. Again, these came from the same division, so I'm surprised at why they got so different. Here we have the Drosera spatulata, but the Tamlin a variety, so people breed a lot of different ones and different variations. So again, this one is the Tamlin kind. This one's pretty cool because it grows quite big and it has nice kind of spoon shaped leaves and they can get really deep red coloring. These seem to flower a lot too but it doesn't matter because as long as you feed them they'll be fine. This one is Drosera capensis. This is a pretty big like crowd pleaser. I think a lot of people start with this variety because it's really easy to grow. In fact it grows like weeds pretty much everywhere but it's very big showy. It has very long petals. When they catch something big they kind of curl up and it's just a very cool interactive one with very beautiful flowers. I have a red variety you'll see later but I also have tons of seedlings because these things spread everywhere but they're really awesome and I really like them. Very good for fungus snap problems. I really love the amount of dew on these it just looks so awesome and very crystal or gem like. They're very cool. This one is a little more wacky looking. This is Drosera binata except for this is a very different cultivar. I'm not sure which one but this sundew traditionally likes to fork. There's a lot of other better ones too out there that will fork multiple times so you'll get kind of like a bunch of almost fractal Y shapes off of each branch. As you can see in the base of this pot and like many others, the sundews that flower a lot get seeds everywhere and soon you just have sundews growing on every surface. It's crazy but it's cool because it's just better decoration. Mine flowers like crazy which is kind of annoying because the stalk is huge but it's pretty cool. I do wish it grew in a tighter bunch and not so tall. Maybe it needs more light, I don't know. But either way, very curious sundew. 
This one is Drosera capillaris, the Emerald Envy cultivar. And as you saw in the frame before, all those little baby sundews came from this one. So I knocked the flowers on accident and it sent seeds everywhere. I like this one a lot because it's a very tight rosette with really awesome dew. And if you give them enough light, like most sundews, they get a nice red color. But this one stays red with a kind of a green core. And it just looks really pretty when it's in its like perfect form. This one has some seedlings in its pot too. I think eventually I'd like to start selling carnivorous plants, but we'll see. I just really like the dew on these things because it just looks so crystal-like or gem-like. And maybe that's why they call it the Emerald Envy. This one is a North American sundew and it's actually native to the state I live in. This is Drosera rotundifolia. Unfortunately, most of them are in their like hibernaculum mode and that's because they're dormant for the winter and in the springtime they'll open up. You can see one in the right corner that's still open and not in hibernation. Most of the sundews I've showed you earlier were all tropical ones so they don't necessarily need to go into dormancy. That one finishes up the sundew box and now we have two other boxes with a kind of a miscellaneous mix. You'll see something other than sundews in here. Already these are looking way different than sundews, and that's because they're not sundews, these are pitcher plants. I'm gonna get the sundews out of the way in this collection. This first one is also Drosera capensis, but this one is a different cultivar. This one is a very like red cultivar and not such a big leaf. So there are many different kind of varieties that people have bred. This one has a little baby one sprouting up next to it and plenty of other random seeds that got thrown in there on accident. I believe this is the last of the sundews, and this one is the Burmani sundew. I really love this one. It's very small, a very cool rosette, and it has a slightly different like feeding mechanism. It has these extra little tentacles that are a lot quicker than the regular kind. This is another sundew that if you don't feed it enough while it's flowering, it will either go dormant or pretty much die. So you wanna make sure you feed it like crazy and collect those seeds. I got two Venus flytrap cultivars I'll show you quick. This one is called the Red Dragon. Um, this one gets quite red both in like the leaves and the flytrap heads. So it's very cool and unique compared to the ones you see in the store. I'm not very good at raising these so they don't look all that good, but I still like them anyways. This next one is the B52 cultivar. And this one isn't looking as good as it should because I darn near killed it. But these flytraps actually get huge, almost an inch long on like the entire like flytrap head. But right now they're kind of small because again, almost killed it. Now we're on to the Saracenia. These are going to be pitcher plants, quite different from everything I've already shown you. However, I don't have the exact cultivar of these because the guy I get my plants from, he threw these in for free and I appreciate it because they turned out to be quite cool. But yeah, these ones catch bugs by letting them kind of crawl inside and then they fall in the tube and get digested. These next bigger and more like filled out ones are going to be an actual special cultivar. So this is also Saracenia, but it's a Catsby um, mixed with Bengal Tiger. So it's kind of a, I guess a hybrid, you could say. I like these a lot and they're finally really starting to root well and they have like a big bulb that they're growing out plenty of new pitchers. So it's really cool. These again are a little different for care compared to the sundews. And I honestly prefer sundews just cause you just keep them in water and it's pretty easy. I definitely recommend looking up Saracenia uh, pitcher plants on the internet because you'll see a lot better selection than what I've just shown you. And they're a lot prettier. Let's move on to the final container. This was the first one I set up. And this one keeps it nice and humid. I only have to add water like every two months, which I really like. The rest I gotta water more frequently, but let's take a look. This one actually looks a lot more like a bog. I got tons of sphagnum moss in here, both the green kind and some of the red kind, so it's pretty cool. And I've just thrown random cuttings and seedlings in here. Nothing in here is too organized. However, there is one beautiful plant in here and it is a Saracenia perpia. This thing is doing fantastic in this dome and it's filling out wonderfully. I really love this plant. When I first got it, it was such a tiny little baby, but now it's really grown into its own and it's very pretty. I like using this big humidity dome for some of my leaf propagations because it really allows them to sprout well and get big quick without the fear of them drying out. This thing works excellent for leaf cuttings. All right, guys, it sums up this video. I hope you guys get into collecting these things and I hope I kind of showed you something you've never seen before, maybe so you can get an idea of like what to get into next because we all like to hoard plants. But anyways, guys, another cool thing about these is they take up very little space. You can have a huge collection in a tiny like 24 inch container. So it's really awesome. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing all these interesting plants. And as always, may your plants go strong and healthy. I'll see you next time.